This weekend marks one year since a massive earthquake hit Japan, sending a tsunami into coastal villages and killing an estimated 20,000 people. The event triggered the Fukushima nuclear disaster that displaced 340,000 residents. Despite Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda's assurances that the emergency has been brought under control, many Japanese residents remain wary of the risks of nuclear power. 92% of Fukushima residents say the government has not done enough to rebuild the prefecture, according to a survey released this month. All but two of the country's 52 nuclear reactors remain shut down amid concerns about safety and oversight. In the U.S., dozens of Fukushima style reactors have come under scrutiny. 100 similar reactors are nearing the end of their expected lifespan. Some of them are near population centers or in earthquake zones. All in all, 100 million Americans could be at risk in the event of a Fukushima like disaster. That's according to a new documentary called Danger Zone Aging Nuclear Reactors. The film takes a look at the Nuclear Regulatory Agency tasked with ensuring the safety of U.S. nuclear facilities. Joe Rubin is a producer and reporter with the Center for Investigative Reporting. He's also one of the producers, along with Serene Fang, of the documentary. Joe Rubin, welcome to FSRN. Hey, it's really a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Begin by giving us an idea of how many of these aging plants we're talking about and describe the relicensing process that's in place that's supposed to ensure safety. Now, there's 104 plants in the United States, and、um, for a lot of historic reasons, we haven't built plants in a long time. So, all of them are either past 40 years or approaching 40 years.、Um, 71 of them have already gone through the 20 year license approval process. And, and originally, basically, it was thought that plants would only operate for 40 years, but that was really sort of the lifespan of a plant. But they've all gone,、um, 71 have gone through that, that process, and it, none of them have been red flagged. They've all,、uh, gone, all gone through it. And one of the reasons for that is that originally the idea behind relicensing was. Well, if we're going to relicense these plants, it really needs to be like a stress test. We need to look very thoroughly at what's happening with the different components, how well are they aging. Um, um, and they,、um, after Yankee Row,、um, in fact, they found that the,、um, uh, the reactor was,、um, was badly embrittled and dangerous, and so they shut it down. And so after that,、um, you know, the industry pushed back and, 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 and really changed, were able, through lobbying, to change the standards of relicensing. That um, uh, inspection you're talking about, Yankee Row is in Massachusetts, right? Yes, yes. We've been talking about the oversight of these plants and who's responsible. You speak with Gregory Yasko, the chairman of the Nuclear、mm-hmm. Regulatory Commission, and, and, and his voice is featured in your documentary. Our job is to make sure that plants are safe today,、uh, tomorrow, and, and every day that they have a license to operate. So, if there's a problem with a particular facility,、um, it's our job to make sure they address that, faci- that, that problem now, not wait until license renewal. That's Gregory Yasko, chair of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Joe Rubin, what about this safety process that he's describing? Well, I think what Commissioner Yasko is saying there is he's saying, look, We, when we, we, we,、uh, we write license these plants and we, we have a certain process that we go through.、Um, but basically, we have two inspectors in the plants at all times, and we're always on the job of safety. That would be the, the NRC's defense there, and that's what the commissioner is referring to. And、um, that makes a lot of sense on some levels, but then if you look at some incidents, like at、uh, the Davis Bessie plant in Ohio in 2001, There was a leaking、um, component, which was、um, uh, this was a known problem that, that, that the NRC was aware of, and it was、um, leaking onto, to, to,、uh, onto the top of the reactor and, and again causing、um, it to d- decay. And the utility there pushed back. The, the NRC, lower level NRC staff, wanted to inspect it. The utility、uh, pushed back and was able to.、Um, Um, stopped that until it was almost too late. They finally went in and inspected it, and、um, they found that,、uh, the, the, that it was、um, within months of having a major accident.、Um, the, the, the inspection, or,、uh, uh, I think it was, I believe it was an internal NRC inspection,、um, came back and said that it was, you know, what、well, could have eventually happened could have been somewhere between Three Mile Island and Chernobyl. Well, that's not exactly, you know, comforting. So,、um, 
You know, I think that argument of, oh, well, we're doing a good job every day. You look at incidents like that, and it's, 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 it's worrisome. And as we talk about inspections that the NRC carries out, it's important also to look at what exactly they entail and, and what they don't include. What is left out from these reviews? Well, they don't do a stress test. They don't look at new earthquake information. Um, they don't look at evacuation plans. In New York City, of course, people are incredibly concerned, including the governor, who, um, who his, his attorney general, I would say, has become almost a shadow NRC the number of times that they've had to sue the agency to have it step up its, its oversight. So, uh, you know, they don't look at some, some really fundamental questions there. Well, you mentioned the role that the nuclear industry itself has, and, and um, that's been uh, a concern that's been raised about its influence on the NRC as well in its inspections and its decision making. Yeah, I mean that that you know comes up again and again, and and um, you know um, in, including with um, you know and former NRC officials. It's it's not exactly a secret, and even even when we you know I, I would say that even when we, when we visited the agency and we were just, just kind of chit chatting before our interview with uh, the commissioner. I mean, I noticed that everyone had been sort of in and out. The people we spoke to, many of them had been in and out of the industry. You know, like, there's probably a lot of expertise you can get within the industry, but um, there's there's some real problems with 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 the way that the influence that the industry is having on on, on regulatory decisions. Joe Rubin is a producer and reporter with the Center for Investigative Reporting. He's also one of the producers, along with Serene Fang, of the documentary Danger Zone: Aging Nuclear Reactors. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Hey. Thanks so much. And you can find a link to the documentary on our website, fsrn.org.